the main three core functions of the universities are teaching, research, and consultants. In every year, Muhimbili University of Health and Early Sciences MOHAS conduct research in health and early sciences. The research are normally targeting diseases and health conditions that are of public importance. The research findings disseminated appropriately among the key stakeholders through different communication channels, including university-wide dissemination symposium. For a number of years at MUAS, we have been conducting what we call the annual MUAS conference. That means we have a dissemination conference once a year. Through the assessment, we came to realize that this is not enough. Two days conference in a year, um, many people will have no opportunity to disseminate the research findings. We came up with the idea that we should at least have every three months a year a research dissemination symposium. Dissemination is part of showing case on what we are doing. There is no human disease which is entirely environmental or entirely genetic. The real challenge is to understand for any disease how much is the genes and how much is the environment. Now a prototype of environmental diseases are infectious diseases such as malaria. Malaria is a disease of public importance that globally affects over 200 million people in every year. More than 90% of the cases are from Sub-Saharan Africa. In Tanzania, malaria still is a leading cause of morbidity and mortality that costs more lives of people, especially children under five of age and pregnant women. Once we created what we call the research agenda. So what is the agenda of our research? What are we targeting? And malaria is one of our research agenda. Malaria is also an infection, but it's unique. This is the disease which is caused by malaria parasites, Rasmonia fasparum, but this is spread by the mosquito. These are insects that you remove around the breeding sites. If you speak of malaria eradication, you should speak of malaria at human stage, and you should speak of malaria at mosquito stage. Agent of malaria, which we call Plasmodium falciparum, it doesn't just enter our body, it actually penetrates individual red cells. It is unbelievable task of interaction between a protozoan and a highly developed mammal like human. So there is no other case where the parasite is so closely uh, integrated into the biology of the host. And here we have two techniques which are currently used to confirm whether one is a malaria patient. Uh, there's the so-called rapid diagnostic test and then uh, there is microscopy. And here there are issues which I, I wanted to underline. The rational use of medicine has three players. One of the players is the health worker himself. The health worker should be able to give adequate instructions to the patient on how to use the medicines. And also the health worker has the role to ensure that he gives only an antimalarial drug to only those guys who have been confirmed to have malaria parasites. To eliminate malaria can only be a team effort. You need the people in the field who do the hard work of arranging mosquito nets for all the population. You need the pharmacologists who optimize the drug treatment for treatment of attack and prevention. And you need also basic research to understand how the parasite is uh, trying to adapt uh, to the host red cell. Over the years, Muhas has played long and key roles towards elimination of malaria in Tanzania. For a number of years, uh, researchers from Muhas have been involved in quite a number of research for malaria. And this will start, for example, with the vector control, how to control the mosquitoes, the breeding sites, prevention, for example, research on insecticide treated nets, indoor sprays, but also on the drugs that are used for prevention of malaria but also other strategies for mutual malaria and treatment, including the behaviors of people. The role of MUHAS is to carry out research, to bridge the gap in the knowledge in these intervention areas. Evidence that is generated from MUHAS research, most of this evidence also they are utilized by the ministry. Some of the policies that you see today that have been developed by the Ministry of Response for Health, MUHAS has been part and parcel. Most of our senior staff or researchers they are used by the ministry 
uh, in the advisory boards, uh, in looking for evidence in implementation of the, of the government programs. In order to change treatment guideline, you need to have evidence. And the uh, evidence is coming mainly from research. Mohasi has made great strides in its role to contribute knowledge. This is a bioanalytical lab. Uh, and you see there are various uh, techniques that uh, are mainly used to study the pharmacology of various drugs, including antimalarial drugs. In this lab, we are able to measure blood drug level. Based on the data which we find here, we can easily tell whether the patient has taken the drug of interest, the patient was compliant in taking the medicines, the drug that was taken is bioavailable in blood, to be able to cure different diseases and uh, malaria, definitely, this is the required concentration for the drug to be safe and effective in the management of various diseases. You need to optimize your own protocol in order to achieve the results that you want. We set the protocol and then we go to the field, we collect the human body plasma, and then we carry those tubes to our lab, we store them in a freezer, normally minus 80, and then we set the SOP and then we start to run uh, the process. Normally we start with extraction because first we need to extract and to obtain that analyte of interest from the plasma, then we do reconstitution then we transfer the material to the machine and normally here we use high performance liquid chromatograph to detect and quantify the amount of drug in the plasma. What we're trying to do here is to reproduce in vitro, in a flask, to reproduce what happens in vivo. That is how the parasite invades the red cell and develops in the red cell. MUAS is a research community we are also contributing to research which somehow have contributed in the current treatment and the diagnostic guidelines which we have so far. So we have conducted a number of studies on different diagnostics, for example the current used malaria rapid diagnostic test, improvement of microscope at primary health care and also search on the new drugs. For example now we are using artemisinin based combination therapy. We play our role at a laboratory stage. And these are the findings that need now implementation at large scale and at policy and decision levels. Currently, MUAS is involved in the East African Malaria Research Network. So this was a consortium of East African researchers on tracking emergency of drug resistance. We have an ongoing study. We are trying to see a pharmacokinetic effect of um, anti-malaria drugs through a group of sickle cells. The aim is to find out if one having sickle cell trait, if having the gene for sickle cell may have some effects in the pharmacokinetics and if we speak of the pharmacokinetics is the whole process of taking in the drug to the point of elimination. We are a bit keen to see what may happen in individuals who are being treated for malaria but also for HIV infection and then we have made significant findings in this area. We can now uh, tell that some of the antiretroviral drugs do impair treatment outcomes in some individuals and uh, there is uh, a big explanation which sometimes is related to the drug itself and also to the genetics of some individuals. The success in the quest to end malaria in the country have been possible through a strong stewardship of the government of Tanzania and different stakeholders including MOHAS. The success are there for example for Right now in Tanzania, we have the, the rapid diagnosis test, MRDT. Before that, we are only using microscopy. Now, the government and the British advocates for rapid diagnosis tests, which are very rapid and probably much more easy to do in many health facilities. But also, because of the resistance of malaria parasites, especially Plasmodium falciparum, towards the drugs, there have been changes of drugs for treatment of uncomplicated malaria. Remember, we used to use chloroquine, then we, we stopped chloroquine, went to sulfadoxin, pyrimethamine, SP, we stopped the SP, now we are using Dawiamseto, artemethamine, and the change of these drugs is based on the scientific evidence that this drug is no longer working. So it does not make sense to continue with this drug. It's no longer working in the community. So we have to go to another drug. And if you recall, SP never worked quite long because of misusage. We noted the 
major line of irrational use was malaria over treatment. In one of our studies, it was noted that each fever was treated as malaria. However, not each fever is a malaria. There are a lot of other diseases which can cause fever. Once we removed SP and replaced with artemisinin in combination therapy, we see a difficulty in individuals complying with the drug intake. SP was taken as a single dose, three tablets and the dose is done. And now after it has failed due to resistance, we introduced Atmetha Lumefantrin combination therapy. Now this combination therapy involves six doses which are taken in three days. Our experience has shown that once the malaria patient starts feeling okay, he is likely to stop taking medication. If you take a half dose and then stop there, then the, eventually the parasite will be exposed to low blood drug concentration. As a result, it may start developing resistance. Yeah. Testing another drug for prevention of malaria. This is diadroatomycin plus piperaquin, and this is also recommended by WHO. And the primary results that we are seeing is it, it is very promising. Once the study is concluded, we'll give our, our suggestions and our recommendations to the ministry. There is some success, and then we could see that the, even the increases in some areas. We have the northwestern part and the southern part of the country. But the central part of the country and the, the southern highlands and the areas of the north like Kilimanjaro and Arusha, we are seeing a rapid decline in the prevalence of malaria. Particularly uh, in children and pregnant women. For example, this is a study that we did at Mananyamara Hospital. We found the prevalence of malaria is less than 1%. So if you take 100 pregnant women at the time of delivery, probably find one was malaria. If you compare to three, four, five years ago, this is a, a big achievement. The use of atimethylmefantrin, now I am set up from the second trimester of pregnancy until delivery, it is very, very effective. There is no question that mortality from malaria, which particularly is tragic in children, has statistically proven gone down in this country. Despite the successes, towards elimination of malaria in Tanzania. Still, there are remaining gaps that must be fulfilled. I think there are a number of gaps. One of them we could say that although we have the current tools which are mainly artemisinin based combination therapy, integrated vector control which include insecticide residual spray or IRS. We have insecticide treated net and currently we have this long lasting insecticide net. We see that the effect of this intervention are not uniform. So we still have areas with persistent infection or resistance to change. From the research that we have done but other people also, other institutions also have done, we see that the, the prevalence has gone down but uh, we have to look at the different regions. Some areas in Tanzania are in the level of low transmission, similar to what we see in the other pre-elimination settings like in Zanzibar. Found in one region, the prevalence is very low, like in Dar es Salaam. But in the other region, for example, if you go to Kigoma or Lake Zone, the prevalence is, is high. We need to avoid what we call the targeted interventions. Why, for example, the prevalence of malaria is still here in Kigoma, while in Dar es Salaam is low? Are there different uh, characteristics of the people? Are they using the insects, etc., treated very nets equally? Are there different bleeding sites for mosquitoes? The other part is the uh, use of uh, this rapid test, but you could see some of the patients who have malaria infection, they may test negative, partly because we are dependent on this histidine rich protein too, and we find that in some patients for an unknown reason, we don't know is it gene deletion or prozon effect, which is responsible for getting negative results, although the results may be positive by microscope. So there is a malaria diagnosis the use of microscopy calls upon trained technicians and where there are some doubts, we normally take the blood slides to the second reader. And if the second reader again has got discrepancy results, the slides can be taken to the third reader until we are certain that the results do not give ambiguity. So we need to search for more novel tools which can be used to diagnose malaria. But also what we see we, we look malaria as a whole in the general population, but we have to go to the individual groups. Globally, we have reduced the prevalence of malaria, but now we can go to specific groups, but also we can go to different regions, and, and I think this can bring positive impact. 
it, we make huge researches which are fantastic and we have big data and uh, this data is eventually published in international journals. What we noted is that a majority of policymakers are not interested in reading journals, in papers. The gap we see here is that uh, these findings need to be given a good approach for dissemination because we don't do researches for academic purposes but to enrich the decision makers with evidence-based information that we find in your our researches. We need to let a little bit do a bit much more better so as to trap these decision makers. So that's some of the gaps that we, we think we need to, co to conduct research. Apart from identified gaps, there are some challenges in the struggle to end malaria in Tanzania. There are challenges. Insecticide and uh, drug resistance are the most big challenges we face so far. To be able to blame resistance, to must ascertain the therapeutic level of a drug in an individual. So if a doxin, pyrimethamine or SP, which is the recommended for preventing prevention of malaria in pregnancy, is very low, especially on the second and the third dose. We find many pregnant mothers are not taking SP as recommended. When it comes to use of insecticide nets, you will find that adolescents and adults are less likely to use long-lasting treated nets, especially when they know the level of malaria has gone down. So they allow residual transmission of malaria to continue. Also, we have environmental factors which somehow contribute to the continued transmission, as I've talked in the Lake region with persistent transmission. People are migrating from one region to another. So, you are infected by malaria parasite, you go to another region, the mosquito bites someone, and infect another person. And the entomological factors which somehow uh, have contributed to the continued transmission. But also, there is a the behavior of the, of, of the people. For example, the government, the minister have, have been saying, Make sure you use bed nets. Use indoor spray. If you are pregnant, you go to the clinic. Make sure you get the to therapy. If you have fever, don't take drugs. Go to the, to the hospital so that you are organized and you are given the, the proper medication. The intervention approaches that are necessary towards eradication of the disease are not adequately implemented. Here in Africa, we concentrate much on the treatment rather than the preventive and the prophylactic approaches. The main challenge here is uh, lab facilities. Uh, we, we lack of lab facilities and lab equipment and the reagents we don't have. Most of these challenges are already known and that means the research that we are conducting are already targeting those, the, 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 those, those challenges and uh, we see positive results. Despite the fact that research showed it is very possible to eradicate malaria in Tanzania, but still there are controversial debates that must reach conclusion. There is nothing impossible under the sun. I believe it is possible to eliminate malaria. But a lot of work has to be done. With the current available tools, if there is a scale up of the interventions and the political commitment. I'm sure it is possible, but how soon it will actually happen uh, to me it's difficult to predict. We think it is very possible as long as we, we, we sustain the interventions. With respect to uh, prevention. From the behavior point of view of people. Use of insecticide treated bed nets. Accept residual spraying of insecticide of their homes. Build screened houses. It depends precisely on that combination of preventive measures from the mosquito nets, preventive measure, vector control, preventive measures, uh, chemoprophylaxis, and the treatment of incident cases. By launching these combined approaches, it would be possible to eliminate the disease and bring it back to a very raw prevalence as it has been achieved in Zanzibar. If we address all those uh, problems that we have right now, a problem in prevention and treatment, if we address these problems, it's possible to have malaria-free country like other country, developed countries. However, scientific evidence shows that Tanzania is nearing the point of elimination of malaria, but so many works must be done ahead. My only recommendation is the government should come up with this more strategies that are geared towards eradication of the vector. First of all, to make the drugs available, 
one aspect which we need to to really focus on is provide education education of the community to pregnant women but also to the healthcare workers engagement in the malaria is not only for few people but the government should work closely with local researchers the experience shows that in order to have a great result in malaria control you have to have the supporting evidence that comes from laboratory research. We scientists can do our part, but also the community itself. One way is to activate the policymakers to kind of also develop interest in the acquiring the formation that we do read through papers. We need to sustain the interventions that are in place. It's not all about the drug. People can be adherent, they can use a very good drug, comply with the treatment regimen, but if they are frequently exposed to mosquito bites which contain malaria parasites, these efforts will be counterproductive. That we treat the, the infected ones, but we also direct more energy towards eliminating vector mosquito. Because if you relax, uh, you stop the interventions, the prevalence will go up again. So eradication to 100% is possible, especially if we have political commitment. If government would uh, support and commit itself, then it will allow many researchers to work in malaria research and also in malaria surveillance. I recommend to have small research grants to fund small groups that are doing fundamental research on malaria. Because once you go towards elimination, you need to have a very strong system for surveillance. But to implement these guidelines, we need more funding and also for malaria researchers and the program implementers to work together. Different stakeholders, different approaches should come together. The efforts to roll out effective prevention and the curative interventions have led into significant reduction of malaria-related death in South Tanzania, attaining the global goals for reducing child mortality. It is of paramount importance to strengthen such efforts and effectively engage policymakers, implementers, and implementing partners to achieve common goal of ending more sufferings of Tanzanian populations from malaria.